What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now, today's video, as part of our series, is on physio. What resources did I use to study physiology in medical school, and how did I go about doing that? So, number one, I'm going to keep these videos direct and to the point so they don't get long. Number one, what's the most important? Get, you know, you're going you're gonna to go to lecture, maybe you'll podcast at home, but those lecture materials from the professor are like your primary source when it comes to preparing for your school's exam. I mean, this is common sense that so your professor is going to pull from their own material when they're preparing exam questions. So it's great if you're using, you know, good textbooks and board prep books and whatever other material that you use, but if you're not hitting those lecture notes, you're kind of just putting yourself unnecessarily at a, uh, at a disadvantage when it comes to your school's exam. So don't do that. Number one, read their PowerPoint, core notes, lecture notes, whatever your school is giving you, and make sure you know those. I mean, that's just a, a reality that you need to do well in your school's exams to get to the next year and get into third year and et cetera. So get that out of the way. Study those first. Now when it comes to actual resources. So this is physiology. To me, physio was one of the most important courses. I've already said in the anatomy video that anatomy was my most favorite, and I thought it was the most important. But that's because I'm biased and I like anatomy. But physio is a very important course. Uh, I mean, during second year, when you take PATH, PATH is going to take in your physio, it's going to take in your histo, it'll take in the amino, it'll take in the anatomy. It takes in everything, and it's a really good course that if you studied hard during first year, if you just tried your best, um, all that will really pay off when you get to um, pathology because it makes your life easier and you can actually appreciate the pathology much more and have a more rich experience. And you'll remember it better because you know the, kind of the foundational material. So when it comes to physiology, I got three things here to kind of prove a point. Um, this is what some of my classmates use. This is like a classic textbook. It's a textbook of medical physiology by Guyton and Hall. Guyton is a huge name in physiology, but look at the size of this book. It's gigantic, right? Very big book. I mean, this is a kind of... Actually, I used this book when I was an undergrad. It, it happens to be a medical school book, but our professor just made us use it. Um, some of my classmates actually sat there and read this. Was that a good idea? I guess, if you've never taken physio, or if you're really in the mood to take some killer physio. But the reality for me was... I don't have that much time to sit there and read through all this. And the reality is, hopefully you've kind of picked this up from my videos, there's low-yield content and there's high-yield content. This thing is full of low-yield content. There's so much detail minutia here. So what did I do with Guyton and Hall? I used it as a reference text. So if we're covering, say, um, just simple heart physiology in lecture, and I don't understand something well, or if I need to kind of look into something, yeah, you can Google it very easily, go on the internet, but I just happen to have this book from undergrad. It was kind of an expensive book. And oh, by the way, all the books all, that I show, everything, I'll put links in the description for Amazon, because I buy all my stuff from Amazon because it's cheap, and I like saving money. <laughs> but um, everything's there, so if you just want to find it, you can just click it, you don't have to, or you can go search, I don't care. Or you can go buy it more expensive from somewhere else, whatever you like, but I just, I put it in there for you. But anyways, I just happen to have this. I remember it being an expensive book when I bought it in undergrad, so I didn't like that. Because I had it around, I used it as a reference. Um, a lot of people just Google stuff, and that's fine. But um, it's, a, it's a very respected book. It's a great book. Um, like a reference book that I said, and that's what I used it for. I didn't sit there and read the whole thing through. I don't find that to be a good use of my time because then I'm reading a whole world of minutia and low-yield material in addition with, with what's really important. Of course, the lecture notes will, will tell you what's important for your class, but that's not always the most important in clinical medicine. That's where review books come in, and that's kind of the theme for today or for any class, that review books make your life easier. So reference book. I happen to have it. I kept it. Would I recommend buying it? If you're serious, yeah, this is a great book. Um, so I, I would recommend buying it. It is pricey, but it's worth it to me to have as a desk reference. And I kept this from undergrad. Now I'm a second year. I still keep it because it's that good of a book. What will most people use in medical school as like their textbook for reference is Physiology by Costanzo. And this is a reference book. Again, a little bit smaller now, you'll notice, right? But um, again, Good book, good reference book. Most people, it's cheaper than the Guyton Hall, which is why people will buy this one. And it's thinner, so it's, it's, it's you kind of get the point. As the books get thinner and thinner, and they're called like medical school physio, it means there's more and more high yield content, less and less, you know, details and minutia. Get, get that out of there, make it thinner. But 
again, I, I happen to have Guyton and Hall, so I use that as like my main reference. I read this for more of my, my chapters. I just wanted it to really get a good grasp on if I didn't get it in lecture, um, because reading Guyton and Hall would take a long time, and there's a lot of details in there. I'm just like, oh, this is what are you doing, Guyton? But um, this book is much better in the sense that there isn't that much detail to have to kind of get around through. And it's to the point. So for reading, yeah, you can read this. It's a lot thinner, and there's time. Now, what do what, what does everyone have to use, in my opinion? BRS Physiology. BRS is uh, it's called Board Review Series. It's like a lineup of books. They have BRS Histo and Cell, BRS Anatomy, BRS Micro and Immuno, BRS Physio, BRS Path, BRS Farm, BRS... I already said micro. But you get the point. This company figured out, hey, we'll just make BRS books for everything and make money. And that's what they do. But what's the beauty of this? Look how tiny it is. Look how tiny the book is. And it contains all the physio that you need to know for medical school. Is that crazy? That's not even believable. You don't even believe me. Look how big Guyton and Hall is. It's humongous. This thing's not. Right? How can everything you need to know in medical school be in such a tiny book? This is why, this is the, this is like the golden key. This is the golden necklace you don't share. This is the high yield material distilled down. So what, okay, so I got three things here. What do I do with them? Why am I wasting my money? I'm not. You don't have to buy this, but I happen to have it. But if you want to have a great reference book, I would keep it around and I would get it. But you don't have to. So I'll just do this. I'm going to move it away. Because most people, I'm sure, will not go and buy it because it's expensive. Or maybe it's not that pricey anymore. I haven't checked in a while. But uh, for me at the time, I thought it was pricey. So most medical students will just stick with these two. Something to read well. Costanzo, right? Read well. It's not too bad. Mostly high yield. Some medium yield stuff, obviously. But it's a great textbook, man. You can just sit there and read this, and you will learn your physio. Fantastic, right? But say you have like a shelf exam coming up for physio, or you just want to read something to make sure you are learning all the high yield material. That's the key. This is why board review series BRS books for physio are great. BRS, um, and there's other review books for you can get like high yield series or Deja Review, but uh, for physio, I found that. Uh, for physio, the BRS was the best, and everyone else has told me that as well. And it does not let down. So some, okay, but here, okay, here's how it works. It's like that's uh, that's a section that no one actually reads. Okay, okay, good lung physio. They're all like these. It's just titled with little bullet points of just straight high yield information. The thing is, you can't use this as a primary source. You can't not know physio and pick this up and start reading it. It just won't make any sense. It's literally just like highlighted points, and you have to already know a, a fair amount of physio to kind of be able to put it all together. If you studied well, it's a great review, because if you're reviewing for a shelf exam or for your physio final for your school, it's going to be tough to go through all this again, through all your lecture notes. But if you go through all this, not too bad. You know, it's fonts reasonable sized and you know what's going on, and you understand, you can kind of review, you can use this as like, it's an outline text to help you understand what do you know, what do you not know of all the high yield material that you have to know. So as they say, if you, actually the cool thing is, this is Costanzo again, so it's the same person that made this book, so they just distilled it down to pure high yield. Right? So you can use this book to say, do I need to know everything that I need to know? And my big civ in school told me, if you know Costanzo, the BRS one back to back, you're good for physio. If you know all the content, you're fine. Um, and if you're really, really super wanting to know more, you can try to memorize more of the bigger Costanzo. But here are the two things that I recommend. I don't work for these people. I don't even know who Costanzo actually is. Uh, well, it's a girl, it's Linda. But all that's all I know about Costanzo. But it, they're good books, and I'd recommend them. Um, I don't get paid for this. I don't know who these people are, but uh, and I feel like I'm like representing these people. So hopefully, these people are a good people, and it's a good company. But good reference book fantastic review book and I think this is the one if there's nothing you buy for physio this is the one thing I would recommend buying because you can go through your lecture notes you can go through the internet but at the end of the day you need to go through BRS physio and review and say do I know all that I need to know so hopefully that helps and if you're super gunner go for the big one why not I don't care um, hopefully that helps guys um, those are the resources I used I don't, I mean, my big thing, and, I, and I've heard this many other times, is just pick a resource that you like for a class and stick with it. Um, I have three things here. When did I use this? Once every blue moon. So I'm going to go like that, right? When did I use this? Every other day, right? And when did I use that? When I wanted to actually read something. So stick with your resources. BRS Physiology is my resource for physio. 
okay? And it's what I like and it's what I will continue to use. I've already used it, I've already annotated it, so I'm comfortable with it. And that's the point, that when you come back to review Physio again later, um, again for step one, if you kind of get the point I'm making here, that you have a resource that you've used and you know it's reliable and comfortable. That's what you want. So take the time, find one resource that you like, and stick with it. For me, it was BRS Physio, and for many others it is as well. Um, and how to study for physio, it's just, I mean, there's no unique thing. For anatomy, there were some unique bits, but for physio, nothing special. It's just like any other class, you have to study. But what I would want to emphasize is that why, this is why I think physio is kind of a difficult course in that it involves a lot of thinking. The questions that you will see, a good physio question will not be simple. It will not be just regurgitate info. It wants you to think, it wants you to apply your concepts. So work hard at physio. There's no tips I can give you, unfortunately. You just have to put the hours in and learn the material. But hopefully this resource guide helped you out. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Send me a message. Um, I don't know, tweet me. I don't know, whatever you guys do these days. And I'll, I'll find your message somehow, and uh, I'll get back to you. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And as always, enjoy your studies.